Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, protests in El Salvador after new assembly dismisses top magistrates. Libya's interim government urges Turkey to withdraw its forces. Montreal port workers vow to continue struggle after being forced to end strike. And in our video section, we take a look at the landmark electoral victory of the left in the Indian state of Kerala. In our first story, protests broke out in El Salvador following the dismissal of top judges by the right-wing government. Five magistrates of the Constitutional Chamber of the Supreme Court were dismissed following a vote in the newly convened Legislative Assembly on May 1st. The measure passed with 64 votes in favour, led by the ruling New Ideas Party of President Nayib Bukele. The party accused the judiciary of placing particular interests over the health and life of the entire population. The judiciary had blocked some of the COVID-19 related decrees issued by the President. The Constitutional Chamber declared the decision null and void and a violation of the Constitution. However, shortly after the vote passed on Saturday, the National Civil Police took over the Supreme Court building. The new de facto magistrates selected by the Legislative Assembly were then escorted by the police. Attorney General Rao Melara was also dismissed on allegations of political bias. As reported by El Faro, Melara has been investigating the Health and Treasury Ministries and the government's secret negotiations with the MS-13 gang. Local media reported heavy police presence outside the prosecutor's office on Saturday night. The newly appointed Attorney General Rodolfo Delgado arrived at the office in the early hours of May 2nd. The government's decision has been condemned as a technical coup d'etat by judicial officials and the opposition. They have argued that the Constitutional Chamber had served as a crucial barrier to the abuse of governmental powers. President Bukele has repeatedly been accused of authoritarianism. Protests against the government began on Sunday as people gathered at the monument to the constitution in San Salvador. Protesters raised slogans denouncing dictatorship and what they called the Bukele coup. In our next story, Libya's interim government has asked Turkey to withdraw all foreign fighters from the country. Foreign Minister of Libya, Najira al Mangush, made the appeal on May 3rd following a meeting with Turkish officials in the capital Tripoli. This follows months after top UN officials called for the withdrawal of all foreign soldiers. Special Representative Stephanie Williams had stated in January that the warring factions in Libya were honouring the ceasefire agreement. The Libyan parliament also approved a 35-member unity government in March. The government will remain in power till the national elections scheduled for December. The ongoing peace process has revived hopes for ending the decade-long war in the country. In the meantime, here is Abdul Rahman of People's Dispatch to talk more about Turkey's presence in Libya. The interim government in Libya has asked Turkey to withdraw its forces from the country. The demand should be seen in the context that the interim government in Libya has the responsibility to prepare the country for the national elections in December this year. And presence of foreign troops are seen a threat to uh, the peace process in the country. The United Nations has raised similar concerns in the past. The United Nations Security Council passed a resolution in September last year, uh, uh, Resolution 2542, in which it, it asked the member countries to uh, withdraw their forces from uh, Libya and refrain from any kind of military interventions, intervention there. Uh, the, uh, the, the Turkish troops were deployed in Libya after the then government of national accord uh, signed an agreement with Erdogan uh, following the threats posed by Khalifa Aftar forces. Uh, according to the UN estimates, there are around 20,000 foreign troops still in Libya. Out of these 20,000, more than 13,000 are from are deployed by Turkey. Most of the forces deployed by Turkey are Syrian mercenaries belonging to the Syrian National Army, uh, the so-called opposition force in Syria, which is fighting against Bashar al-Assad. Um, uh, and Turkey claims that the deployment of its forces in Libya is legitimate as per the agreement signed by the, uh, between the governments, and therefore, uh, so, uh, and therefore uh, it should not be seen as a threat. And, there, uh, and that's why it has not given any assurance uh, uh, about the withdrawal of the forces yet. Uh, however, uh, the interim government quotes that there is a fragile peace process in the country which requires that all foreign troops withdraw and there are no, uh, uh, there is no government of national accord anymore in the country. All the uh, uh, sev uh, several governments which were there before 
the formation of interim government had been dissolved following the formation of interim government. Hence, uh, Turkey should uh, uh, withdraw its, uh, its forces uh, from Libya. We now go to Canada where port workers in the Quebec province have been forced to end their strike. 1,150 workers at the port of Montreal had gone on strike on April 26th. They were protesting the pressure tactics used by the management during negotiations for a contract. This included extending work shifts from 5 hours 20 minutes to 7 hours. Workers have been without a formal contract since 2018. Organized by the Canadian Union of Public Employees, they issued a 72-hour strike notice on April 23rd. However, the federal government announced it would introduce a back-to-work legislation which would forcibly end the strike. The workers' protest action had effectively shut down operations at Canada's second largest port. The Canadian Senate passed Bill C-29 of the Port of Montreal Operations Act on April 30th. The law mandates that the mediator arbitrator should be selected for the negotiations. The most recent collective agreement will also be extended until a new deal is reached. The government actions were widely condemned by workers' union and certain opposition groups. A statement by the union argued that forcing a back-to-work legislation essentially removes all incentives for employers to negotiate in good faith. Before the walkout on April 26th, workers had already been on overtime and weekend strikes. This was in response to the suspension of minimum pay guarantees by the Maritime Employers Association. The CUP has announced that they will challenge the legislation in court and file a complaint with the International Labour Organization. The union has denounced the law as an attack on the constitutional right to protest. Workers also led a march against the law as part of mobilizations on May Day. And in our final story, we go to the Indian state of Kerala, which has witnessed a major left victory in the legislative elections. The Left Democratic Front, led by the Communist Party of India Marxist, has won 99 out of the 140 seats in the State Assembly. The elections also saw a decisive defeat for the far-right agenda of the Bharatiya Janata Party, which is in power in the centre and is held by Narendra Modi. This is the first time in over 40 years that a government will come back to power for a consecutive term in Kerala. Here is Subin Dennis, a researcher with Tricontinental, to talk about the reasons behind the LDF's victory. Putting it in simple terms, we could talk about six reasons for the victory of the Left Democratic Front in Kerala. One, its policies have been popular. The LDF government expanded public education and public health care in a big way. It increased pensions and greatly improved their coverage to benefit a total of almost 6 million people. It built 250,000 houses for the poor. Apart from these, it made major investments in economic infrastructure such as new roads and bridges. Finance Minister Thomas Isaac led the effort to raise resources necessary for these. The right wing in Kerala has traditionally claimed that the left is not good enough when it comes to building economic infrastructure. But this time, they lost that plank. 2. Leadership Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan emerged as an extremely popular leader with the leadership he showed in steering the state during several periods of crisis. Kerala was hit by severe floods in 2018 and 19, and then by the COVID pandemic. The LDF government handled these crises efficiently and ensured relief to the people. The important role that Health Minister KK Shailaja played in the battle against the COVID pandemic made her immensely popular too. Importantly, it became clear to the people that it was the LDF which was the best suited to handle the challenges that lie ahead. 3. Commitment to Secularism when the BJP government at the centre brought in the Citizenship Amendment Act and the National Register of Citizens that threatened to turn Muslims into second-class citizens, the LDF government stood firmly against the CAA and NRC and declared that they will not be implemented in Kerala. Kerala was the first state in which the State Assembly passed a resolution against the CAA. This gave religious minorities and other democratic-minded people even more confidence in the left. 4. Communication Pinarayi Vijayan's daily press conferences during the floods and the pandemic, which people watched live, became a very effective method of communicating directly to the people. Apart from that, the left built a large social media presence by mobilizing its activists and sympathizers. This meant that the falsehoods that right-wing media propagate and which used to have a shelf life of months or even years were being demolished in the matter of days or even hours. 5. Reaching out to more sections of people the LDF is a coalition of parties led by the Communist Party of India Marxist. In recent times, the LDF has expanded to include a few more parties which have their own mass base. This has allowed the LDF to reach out to more sections of people, which turned out to be very important in the elections. 6. Organization Over the years, the left has worked to expand the reach of its class organizations and mass organizations. The work of organizations such as the Democratic Youth Federation of India or DYFI 
and that of the trade unions has been crucial in making the community-centered response of the LDF government to the COVID pandemic possible. Organizations like DYFI and the Students Federation of India, SFI, have helped in taking the message of the left to more and more sections of the youth. This organizational deepening, when combined with the LDF government's development and welfare programs, defense of secularism, and its handling of crisis, has made such an impact that even among sections of people who have been opposed to the left for generations, the younger generation is closer to the left. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.